hello hello i have started this video uh many times many many times this is probably the hardest video for i've ever had to make um it was definitely the hardest experience i've ever went through i'm playing with my chopstick because uh, i have really really bad anxiety naturally and this topic makes me um more anxious so i'm gonna be fiddling a lot i'm gonna be um bouncing around i'm sure my and my brain is still processing this topic for myself uh i'm going to talk about my stem cell transplant i'm going to talk about it and to oops sorry I'm going to talk about it in two videos. So this first video is going to be the prep experience. So being prepped for the stem cell transplant, what that was like, all the changes that were made, um, the rules that I had to follow. And then I will make a separate video about my stay in the hospital and um, kind of what the transplant itself felt like um, and my recovery experience. So, um, for a little background, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma stage 2, and this was October of 2018. I did 12 rounds of um, ABVD, which is a um, combination of four different chemos. I would do that every other week. I received... Um, Oh, sorry. At the end of doing the ABVD, I, um, all of the cancer was gone in my body besides the small little um, spot in my thymus. And we watched the spot for three months. The, th um, the spot grew. So even though I didn't have um, a total response to the ABVD, there was a slim chance that I... Um, was cancer free and just had this inflammation so we let that idea breathe for um for the those couple of months and to see what my body would do um so after those couple of months we saw that the cancer was still growing in that area and it spread to two other lymph nodes um this put me in a new category um i still had hodgkin's lymphoma we did testing um tissue testing to make sure that the the lymph nodes were still um, were still dealing with the cancer that we were dealing with, and once um, once we confirmed those Hodgkins, it put me in a category called refractory. And refractory is summed up in a couple of different ways. It either means traditional, the traditional route of getting rid of this cancer that's been proven in the past for most people didn't work for you. Therefore, we need something stronger because the cancer is continuously growing or the cancer came back after going away. The other thing that it can mean is that it, the cancer went away, you were cancer free for X amount of time, some people years, some people months, weeks, whatever, um, and then it, the cancer came back, the same cancer came back um, stronger and more aggressive. So either way, we're looking at something to be more aggressive, a treatment that is stronger. Um, I'm in my car and I'm gonna roll down the window because I'm hot. Um, so my oncologist tells me the plan about the stem cell transplant and it sounds great. I'm obviously willing to do almost anything to get rid of my cancer, right? So um, the stem cell transplant removes um, practically everything. I mean, I will need new vaccinations. I my entire immune system is rebooted pretty much. If your if your immune system was a computer, stem cell transplant is what re reboots it. And having a blood cancer and an, an immuno cancer, um, this would in theory wipe out all cancer cells. So the first step of the stem cell transplant was we needed to get me into remission. And remission means that the cancer is gone. Now, 
for me to be in remission, I needed more treatment. So I started doing a treatment um, called BVB, which is two different chemos. One is a traditional chemo, and then one is a targeted chemo. And they work very well together to attack um, lymphoma. So that was our best bet. That was our that was what we were going to do. I was going to. Um, I ended up uh, doing two treatments and then I had a scan and um, that scan showed uh, a complete metabolic response or whatever it's called so the cancer was gone 100% the cancer is gone still to my knowledge the cancer is gone and I had one more treatment after that and then um, they wanted to do a bone marrow biopsy and they wanted to do a bone marrow biopsy to make sure that, uh, to double make sure that there was no cancer in my bones and therefore I could give myself my own um, stem cells so they could harvest it for me. I didn't need a donor. So I had a bone marrow biopsy. Um, the, uh, the biopsy came back perfect. Um, that experience sucked, but it is what it is. Got past it fast. Um, now it's the beginning of January. And in the beginning of January, I learned a lot. I learned that I am cancer free, that I have to go to a separate hospital and facility to get my transplant done because my hospital does not have the equipment. Um, so I go to that hospital, meet with those doctors and those professionals. They had a complete um, stem cell transplant unit and um, staff that were very knowledgeable and helpful. I met with them and we, they did some blood tests. They um, got familiar with my case and they gave me some books about a stem cell transplant or um, an auto stem cell transplant, which means I was giving, giving myself uh, stem cells. Um, I after meeting the staff over there and going over the plan even further, I um, started on a steroid called Zario. The steroid is to, um, steroid, how do I explain it? It's to make my body overproduce stem cells in my bones. So, um, the steroid was a shot that uh, my mother-in-law or my um, fiance would give me every morning. And I had two shots in the stomach every morning and uh, it would cause just the overproduction of stem cells so that they had enough to harvest. I did that for a couple of days. Um, oh, I totally left out a whole big chunk. Um, before that, I ended up getting the port catheter put into my chest, and that port catheter um, allowed access to my um, to my blood and allowed them to give me medication easier than my port. So this this it was on the side. I don't have it anymore, but it had three little spouts on it, so I could have medication, platelets, and fluids or they could do blood or whatever but it was a way for them to have access to kind of like my port without them having to penetrate through my skin a hundred times a day in theory so um, it also allowed uh, the collection of stem cells to go much smoother um, and I'll get to that in a second so after the um, shots they tested my blood and I was oh, I was overproducing stem cells, so it was working well for me. Um, so then they cleared me that I was able to do collection. And what collection looks like is they use my port catheter. One, they hook up one um, tube for um, the in and one tube for an out. And they hook me up to a machine that's kind of like a pump with a, like a spinning thing on it. And pumping in my body and out my body in my body and out my body and my blood is going into the spinning machine that separates it into different categories and the machine's able to take what it wants and obviously it wants my stem cells 
Um, after I went through that, they, the first day I didn't collect enough. I only collected 2.3 million and they wanted me to collect 3 million or more. So I um, did another Zario shot that day. And then I had a secondary steroid that they gave me, um, which was another shot to the summit. Um, that evening, uh, it had to be time released so that I was at the hospital that day for like 13, 14 hours. Um, it was a long day. Um, so the next day I go back and I collect 11 million cells, which is incredible. Yay, I'm done. <laughs> Um, so they store my cells and I start to do the intense chemo. This intense chemo is uh, called BEAM and it is used to um, really just make sure that all the cancer is gone, to really deplete everything. This is what is killing the cancer cells in your body and your immune system. It, the way that the doctors explained it to me is this stuff is so strong that without, with how much they give me and um, the way it affects the body, if I didn't have the stem cells, I wouldn't recover. I, I wouldn't get better. It would just continuously get worse. So the first day, I receive um, one chemo, so it's four different chemos. The first day I received one chemo, and I think it was the B, and the second day I receive the EA, and then the fourth day, uh, the third day I receive the EA again, and then the uh, fourth day I received the EA again, so it was every day chemo, and then on the last day, which was the fifth day, um, this is also the day that I was um, put into the hospital, but the fifth day I received um, the M, and the M is notorious to mess up your digestive system, all your soft tissues, all your um, uh, all your rapid dividing cells is getting obliterated by the letter M in this chemo, methylene I think is how it's pronounced. So I had to ice my mouth for two and a half hours receiving that um, to protect the tissue in my mouth because I could have horrific mouth sores and not be able to eat and I need to be able to eat to recover. Luckily, I did not receive any mouth sores. But after I did that chemo, I was Im immediately put into the hospital. Um, I, I saw my room and I was in a private um, hospital floor because the air had to be circulated a certain way, the, the rooms were pressurized a certain way to protect our, our bodies because I didn't have an immune system. I still very, very have a very little immune system and it's um, it's been almost 50 days. So yeah, that was, it was scary. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about my uh, hospital stay another time, but that was just kind of the prep. It was, it was a lot. It was, um, in like a three week span, I went from you're cancer free, uh, to being in the hospital again. And all of that kind of just squished together. They didn't want me to have any time to relapse. They didn't, um, want to stall this out. And I'm very thankful now today because of the virus that's going around, I don't know if I would have had the same access or the same level of care um, with um, everything going on. So I'm very grateful that I was able to do this a couple months prior. Well, thank you. I hope I answered some questions, but if you still have any questions, I am planning on talking about my experience being in the hospital. But if um, you have any questions about the prep or in the before or how anything felt or my experience with um, getting my catheter removed, anything like that, I'm so much, I'm so happy to be able to um, fill you in on how I experienced everything. So thank you and have a good rest of your day.